Hello. Uh, it's been a little bit over 28 days since I put up the Surface Pro 7 one week review. The world has changed a little bit and some of the scenarios in which I envisioned usage of it has changed a little bit. So one of the reasons I purchased the Surface Pro 7 was that I needed a portable computer with a full operating system that I can take on my commute to work, do things like some coding, working on video games on my spare time without having to do it on my work laptop. So I would carry both of them at the same time, but I didn't want something extra heavy like a MacBook Pro because I already use a MacBook Pro at work and carrying two of them to work is very heavy. It needed to check off a couple of tick boxes, which was that it had to be light, portable, use have definitely have to have a full operating system on it and decent enough batteries so the surface pro 7 on paper checked off all of it so as a as a laptop experience it definitely holds its own against uh, something like a macbook pro it's portable it's light great keyboard Great for what I use it for, software development. Absolutely love it for that. Let's talk, um, let's talk software a little bit. This does run Windows 10 Home out of the box. For my use case, I had to upgrade it to Windows 10 Professional. So that's added extra cost. The reason for that is that Windows 10 Home does not have virtualization which is a way to run virtual machines like VMware or VirtualBox, or in my case, Docker required the virtualization to be enabled in order to use it. So upgraded to Windows 10 Professional right off the bat. And one of the key updates that Microsoft has done recently that has really improved the usage of this machine as a development environment was that they released Windows subsystem for Linux 2, an upgrade over the previous one. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the specifics, but one of the things that has benefit from that was that Docker inside a Linux, um, inside like the Linux um, subsystem works perfectly. So for me, that, has been a huge improvement because I relied heavily on Docker to build my applications. So the Windows subsystem for Linux 2 has been a great godsend because now I can just go into something like, I, I use Ubuntu and get the full Linux experience, Linux shell, not an approximation, approximation like Sigwin or something like that but an actual Linux kernel running on the machine. And it just means it opens up all the Linux web development or um, just the complete Linux ecosystem gets open to me for development. I got Java in there, I got Python, I got C, I got all the compilers I could want inside this beautiful little box. Ish, box ish. This Pro is an okay tablet where it kind of fails is that the battery life just doesn't get it over the edge. If I'm doing something like all day media consumption, reading eBooks on Kindle, reading text, reading web pages, looking at YouTube, this will drain the battery fairly quickly on that light usage scenario. Taking notes, things like that, I can't really rely on this to be available when I'm seeing the battery drop by 1% a minute in some scenarios. So as a laptop, it's great. As a tablet, there are better alternatives. And I'm specifically comparing it to my iPad Pro, which definitely gets me through the day and then some with note-taking, YouTube, media consumption, um, that sort of usage this is like this is great this is, i'm not reviewing this right now but yeah this is great i i don't even have to charge it for a week if i'm just using it sporadically 
I come back and it'll be like at 60% or something midway through the week. This I have to charge because if it doesn't go into hibernate, it's just going to drop and get down to like 10% by the end of the day. And then I'll have a dead uh, laptop when I open it up for the morning. So I, I always have to keep this charged overnight. This one here, I haven't charged this at all last week and I'm at, I'm at like 58% and just uh, use case. And yeah, they're, they're, they're two separate types. I think this aspires to be a tablet, but it doesn't get there as a laptop though. I think it's like whoosh, perfect. Um, battery life. It was weird. The first time I did a test on it, it didn't really do well. The battery lasted to about 20% and all I was doing was just web browsing, YouTube, and using this as a note taking device. And it barely made it through till 8 p.m. with 10% uh, remaining. So I redid the experiment and for whatever reason, it did a lot better. I was able to work it through the day with the same usage and I had about 60% left. So there's a huge disparity in there and I chalk it up to just Windows doing weird Windows things. So that's weird. Um, going forward, like I complained about the battery being a little bit low at four to five hours, but it's actually lasted fairly well in the six to seven and plus hour range for light usage, YouTube, um, note taking, browsing, things of that nature. It seemed to have improved. I don't know why I didn't do anything different. It just did. So this has been marketed as a two in one laptop tablet hybrid. And the experience isn't completely split that way for me as a desktop. It's a great experience. It's very light. It's portable. It's powerful. It's got all the applications that I want inside of windows. It's got uh, the Linux windows subsystem for Linux on it now. So you have the whole Linux ecosystem available to you without having to dual boot or any of that. It's great. It's great for software development. I, I, I really like it for that use case tablet device, which is something that I would use more casually. It's I think not the best for that scenario. It, it's very convincing, like off the, off the top, you look at it and you're like, yeah, sure. It's a tablet. It's got no keyboard and you can hold it like a tablet where this falls short is that definitely the battery life doesn't come close to an iPad. You'll definitely have to charge this by the, at least midway through your day. If you are doing something like note taking or web browsing or using it in that experience, just more of a media consumption experience, even playing games, you'll definitely blow through your battery quickly doing something like rocket league. So I think it's okay as a tablet in a pinch but it's definitely not my favorite full-time tablet experience. So those are my thoughts. I just want to sum it up. It's great for portability. It's got all the power I need as a software developer. It's a, a perfect laptop. I, I don't think I could ask for a better form factor for a laptop. I love the fact that it's thin light and it, coming with a, tablet uh, coming in with tablet abilities is a bonus, but it's not something that really makes it shine. So that's my take on the Surface Pro 7 over the little over a month of usage. Obviously, it's not exactly how I plan to use it now that we are kind of stuck at home. But when things open up, I think it will be great as a device that I can just lug around, just pop it into my backpack and go wherever and, and just have the full desktop experience with me with decent battery, 
but all the power that I need to do all the fun things that I want to do. Um, yeah, the end. So in the last video, I complained about the form factor a little bit, but once you get used to it and figure out how to hold it, it's all right. So someone mentioned about using the kickstand as a way to clamp down on it and actually works pretty well. Just I want to put murder hornets in my film somehow. <laughs>